Hello, everyone. We are coming to you live from Newegg Studios in Southern California. This is Newegg Now. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. And here on Newegg Now, each week, we welcome guests mm -hmm. into the studio. We talk about the latest tech, and we share real big deals on the hardware and electronics you love. Those deals are live now. They just went live <laughs> on newegg.com slash newegg now, mm -hmm. and they'll stay active throughout the end of the day today or while supplies last, I've been burned on that trying to shop for cool gear myself. True so story. check them out while you watch along with the show because we want to save you some cash. It's the end of the year, the holidays. Last minute gifts. This is how we do it. Yes. Uh, so on today's episode, we're going to be joined by representatives from both Microsoft and Generali, who works closely with Intel, two companies that if you're a Newegg fan, you know, probably heard of. Microsoft is going to share the latest updates to their Surface line of products, which should be really cool. And then later on, Generali is going to talk about their partnership with Intel, the importance of identity security, and their new Iris identity protection program. The right time of year to check yes. in on some of that stuff. You know, keep, keeping all your stuff safe, especially as we're all like probably hitting online payments and credit cards pretty hard. Oh, yeah. Trying to wrap this stuff up. So this oh, is yes. a big, big show because it's also our last show of 2018. Hey, yo. This is it. We're, we're, we're doing it. We're doing it live. So we might be going a little long today, mm -hmm. <laughs> just talking with everybody <laughs> and, and chewing through uh, some, some fun stuff because there's a ton to cover before we sign off for the year. Yes. And then as soon as we're off the show, we're going to do some prep for CES. Yes. Stuff too that we'll Lots to, to do before the end of 2018. So much to do. So uh, mm -hmm. as always, we have some fantastic deals on that New Egg Now page, mm -hmm. newegg.com slash newegnow. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the ones from Microsoft and Generali later on in the show after okay. we've had a chance to speak to them. But there are also some other goodies that we want to highlight right at the top of our show today. Yes. Let's start off with a great Fortnite deal. This hey. is one of, if not the biggest games in the world right now. So it makes a lot of sense to bundle up some Fortnite action along with the new GPU. Hey, look at that. So hey. throughout December and January on Newegg, if you pick up a GTX 1070 Ti, 1070, or 1060 graphics card, you'll receive 2,000 V-Bucks and the male Fortnite counterattack set. So make sure you go through this landing page linked in the description below our video to make sure you get the right card. Yes. A GPU upgrade is a great gift for any PC gamer, especially Fortnite fans. So make sure that you check it out while you still can. Yeah. Another great gift for a PC gamer or someone who wants to be a PC gamer. How about a brand new gaming PC? You know. That, you know, <laughs> just, just go whole hog. It's in our script. I, I, I like. I had to. So we have some great deals on those today, like this iBuy Power gaming desktop, the View 21 mm -hmm. with an Intel i7 8th Gen CPU, a GTX 1060 GPU for less than nine hundred dollars. Not too shabby. Yeah. We also have a great selection of general use laptops available hey, hey. for you guys, like the Acer Aspire 5 with an i7 8th Gen uh, 8550U mm -hmm. and a GeForce MX150 for less than $600, or the Lenovo Flex 5 2-in-1 for $100 off. Yeah, definitely dig on those Lenovos. I like Bendy. Um, and if you're looking for some seriously powerful, portable gaming powerhouses, we have some great laptop options. Mm -hmm. You can check out the Razer. RZ09. It's a beautiful 15.6 inch gaming laptop with a Max Q cooled GTX 1060 and an 8th gen CPU for $50 off. We also have the very popular Aero 15X from Gigabyte with a 4K display, a GTX 1070 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM nice. for $100 off, and the MSI GF63 with a GTX 1050 for less than $650. I mean, this is a fantastic time to pull the trigger if you've been looking to pick up a gaming laptop for someone else or maybe yourself. Uh, yeah, shop for yourself. We, we don't judge. Yeah. Yeah, buy yourself some cool stuff too. Tis the season. Yes. So uh, last up, we have to tell you about this sweet storage solution deal. You can choose between several versions of the Western Digital Home Duo personal cloud storage system. So this allows you to have your own private cloud server that only you can access from anywhere you have internet an internet connection. I've been a big fan. I've been a big advocate this whole yes. year. Yes, you of, have. You know, this is a good solution to look at investing in your own storage, cloud storage, 
network attached storage kind of solution. Yes, especially for media. I mean, I think oh, that's yeah. the biggest storage hog on most people's devices is their photos, their videos, their music, podcasts, TV shows, movies, whatever yeah. it is that you do. But as just a, a great place to store all your media so that it doesn't have to live locally on your device is fantastic. Yeah, and especially circumventing like the, the sort of I mean, I, this is silly, I'm gonna say older school, but like having the hard drive plugged into your computer where yes. your computer needs to be running. Right. I'm trying to move more of my family over to network storage. Everyone can access it when they're on their network. Mm -hmm. They've got apps or they can you know, access it remotely, but it's also, you get to control the security standards that you want. I mean, right. you want it to be really simple and streamlined, you can do that. If you want it to be really locked down, you can do that too. And then you also have that safety backup where a lot of these are multi-drive solutions just like you know this western digital dual drive solution is it's having so many photos and videos of lex and i'm sure you're probably in the same boat like yep the parent thing i i, I want to make sure that those are preserved and that i've got a good backup strategy in case something goes bork and I know on this, everything is automatically saved twice with mirror mode. Yep. So you've got that backup there. Um, as you mentioned, the ease of the auto backup from your phone. Uh, it, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the setup is pretty simple too. So if you're if you're out there and you're like, yeah, this sounds too complicated for, say, my parents, who I was going to buy this potentially as a <laughs> gift for, it's pretty easy to use and set up, right? It's gotten a lot better. Yeah. So, th th you know, you plug it in, you set it up, you do have to install a hard drive on a router, mm -hmm. you know, plug in cables and stuff. But that's, it, it's, they've gotten way better at presenting the app strategy. Where, you know, I used to do this all through like FTP servers. There's no way I was gonna like put my grandmother right. on that. But now, right. it, especially <laughs> Western Digital, because I have been using some of their products too, it's you pull up an app on your phone and it's just like if you went through Dropbox. Great. Or if you went through, you know, like a OneDrive or any other type of cloud storage solution, iCloud. Um, you still need to spend that little extra time getting, you know, the admin password set up and sure. getting the cables plugged in. Mm -hmm. But once you do, the actual operation is pretty much the same as any other type of cloud storage. And then what I really like is now, I've got everything in triplicate. Awesome. So I, I have my key photos and documents on a computer, on our NAS, mm -hmm. and then also cloud backed up too. Right. So you, you can really use this in tandem with a couple other strategies for making sure like, if anything goes down, I might lose a day or two of information, not, oh my gosh, there goes my whole life. <laughs> right, and specifically talking about the uh, Duo personal cloud storage yes. system, uh, there's also a USB port. So if you have photos and videos and documents saved on a former external hard drive or flash drive or something like that, you can plug that right in to port that over. So totally. super simple. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I, can't, I can't stress that enough. It, mm -hmm. I, I totally won my wife over, Marie over, when it was like, watch, you don't even really do anything. As soon as you're on Wi-Fi, all the photos that you yep. just took of Lex while we were out just got dumped onto the NAS and we're backed up to Google Photos at the same time. Perfect. So it really is. This is the right time of year to have those conversations with your family and friends. Right like, before you take all, all of the photos, all the family photos. photos. You know, like, uh, you know, and then take them to a big box store and make photo books out of them, but you want to save that media as best you can. Totally. So you can pick up the storage center with a variety of capacities from four terabytes to 16 terabytes. Woo! And plenty in between, and and don't be shy going up to some big drives because you'll fill them up way faster than you think you will. 100%. Yeah, these awesome storage <laughs> solutions are discounted all the way up to $220 today only. So make sure you check those out on that new Egg Now page. Yes, now we will be talking about Intel a little bit later on mm -hmm. in today's show on the subject of identity security. And of course, they made huge news in the PC world just yesterday as they revealed their 10 nanometer Sunny Cove CPU cores. Mm -hmm. According to Intel, these should bring faster single thread and multi-thread performance. And, and along with that, Intel also unveiled their next generation of integrated graphics. Their generation 11 graphics will be the first integrated mm -hmm. Intel graphics to hit a, uh, a teraflop of performance, uh, a lot more competitive against some of the dedicated GPUs out there. Yes, yeah, so we'll be following these developments next year when we see them actually in consumer products yes. in 2019. <laughs> we get to play uh, with them. <laughs> so next year should be a really exciting year for PC hardware. Well, and especially that race, because we've seen a number of companies making this transition to smaller fabrication processes. Right. And there were some concerns. Intel was not on that train. I think, I think it's going to be very that? competitive. 
they've got the resources to to come from behind and deliver some crazy products. So I'm, exci I, I'm excited to see what happens in 2019. Yeah, I think 2019 is gonna be a real fun year yes. for that as a competitive aspect. So speaking of Intel, Juan, yes. I know you had a chance to uh, talk about this last week, but I wasn't here. So uh, what is up with this beautiful PC that we have on the TV here in the studio? Oh, this? NBD? It's <laughs> just our new egg Yule PC. You know. Like we do. What? No, I've been cracking up about this all week because you know I got I got to see it like when it first fired up last week, and you know, this is. Uh, I it, mean, it, I love the Milky Way liquid cooling system. Oh. So so you know we've got the RGBs mm -hmm. that are timed with the music that it's playing. It's oh, it's, it's a classic Yule log, you know, at, as per tradition. Uh, if you don't want to fire up a, an actual fireplace in your home, you can Great. stream some kind of Yule log. Great. So we're streaming a PC streaming a Yule log. That's hilarious. Which is hilarious. But it's also crazy overbuilt oh, to I'm just sure. stream the PC because we're Newegg. I feel right? like every PC here is crazy so, overbuilt so, so for whatever we need it for. Not just the ridiculous RGBs. The Yule system has an EVGA 2080 Ti. <laughs> Because, you know, you need your Yule Log ray trace. Of course. <laughs> you couldn't, wouldn't do That light has to be super realistic. <laughs> exactly. So it's an Asus ROG Strix <laughs> gaming monitor, case and cooling from Thermaltake. My favorite joke, and they won't write it into the script, is... Just say it. For, for it to be displaying fire for a Yule Log, because Thermal Mike helped us with this setup there and the, you go. the case and cooling from Thermaltake, this is the coolest running Yule Log you'll ever find. And a bunch of other awesome specs. <laughs> I, it's it's uh, nuts. After the show today, you can check funny. out the URL in the description below this video on YouTube and Facebook. Check it out live for yourself. Keep it streaming. Oh, yeah, We've is this going to be streaming all through the holidays? All through the holidays. Very it's, nice. So we not only built this to be cool, running cool, but like, it is going to run. I'm totally going to stream that in my parents' The whole house. time. I'm going to fire it I'm up totally too. I'm totally going to do that. That's ridiculous. Very fun. But it makes me so happy. Oh, all that it December exists. long, it says. It'll be streaming yes. all December long. Woot. So uh, check it out for yourself. You can leave yes. it on in the background of your family activities, your holiday parties, uh, just for the ambiance mm -hmm. of having. Uh, I heard you like tech in your Yule logs, so we put so tech in your So funny. Yule logs well, I feel, I feel like the holiday season does become, at least for me, increasingly more techy oh, every yeah. year. Um, as we upgrade our homes to more and more smart home tech, as you travel for the holidays and you need to, you know, control your smart home tech from afar because you're traveling and you want it to look like your home or whatever it is, whether it's playing games with family members, like you totally. said, Beat Saber, oh, with yeah. your relatives, you know, like introducing tech to other members of your family can be really fun. Oh, definitely. Well, and I feel like this last year has been a good catch up year. Uh -huh. So like 2016, we were just starting to push the boundaries on some of this Wi-Fi automated nest thermostats. Yes, the, agreed. The ideas were starting to flow out there. Now I feel like some of my lesser tech savvy family members are getting their footing on what they can do mm -hmm. to, so unfortunately, some of my travel does start to become tech support. Oh yes, right? I was gonna mention that <laughs> in our that? script, it was like getting people new phones, and I'm like, that's always Ooh. a double-edged sword because that means that you're tech support for the you, next two weeks or however long you're home for. Or is it for the next couple years couple that the years phone is in really. operation? But I mean like for the moments when you're like, leave me alone for four hours while I set up your phone yes. and port everything over for you and then instruct you how to oh, use yeah. it. And yes, it becomes a very big thing. But outside um, of us having to field all of that, I kind of feel like a lot of people who weren't on that train are starting to catch up. Yeah, so now the conversations agreed. are starting to get a lot more interesting where I'm not talking about heady tech concepts. Yes. I'm talking like, oh, this is a really cool yep. gadget. You can use this and you can do this with it. And that they're following that conversation yes. and they're interested in mm -hmm. it because they've seen other people doing cool stuff. Yes, yeah. well, even like smartwatches, you know, oh, yeah. like the, the everyday user can f navigate their way around most smartwatch software, which is great. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, so it's really time to kick the show into high gear at this moment. Coming up next, we're going to talk about all the newest and most exciting Surface products from Microsoft, Heck so yeah. stick around. <laughs>
back to Newegg now. Uh, if you know Newegg, then you know PCs. And if you know PCs, you know Microsoft, the most valuable company in the world as of November 30th. Take that, Apple. <laughs> in your face. Sweet start. Sweet start. Uh, one of the most exciting things going on with Microsoft in recent years is their Surface family of products. And here to tell us all about the latest Surface news, we are joined by Alex Humble. Welcome, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's exciting to actually be here, the place where I've ordered and built so many PCs right? from. Yep. It's, 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 it's pretty cool. So especially because like, you can hear the warehouse going off like right there yeah so. it's 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 all over the place so we, we could just go take a visit and like pull, we can't do that we parts can't do i can just get part yeah. oh okay so, so just just to start us off yeah. um i it, for, for our audience could you could you uh detail what you do with microsoft and like what is an average day for alex I, look like i would love to know that i would love to know what an average day for me <laughs> is so a bit of jack of all trades uh lots of lots of training lots of travel content development um, working on videos a bit like this one for Microsoft. So just all things to help people understand, kind of like what you were saying earlier, helping your family understand tech, um, doing that for retailers and retail sales professionals. So Very all cool. Yeah. So, so you're the expert. I, I would hope so, yes. <laughs> totally. Okay, well, before we get into the specific gear that you have brought with you today that we have all over the studio, um, what should people know about Surface products in general? That's a good question. So more... Surface has become more and more, you know, out and about. Like I'm seeing them all over the yeah. place now. Like I saw a guy yesterday in my tiny little hometown airport with a Surface balanced on his lap. You never used to see that anymore. So the Surface brand is certainly getting out there. But Microsoft really designed the entire Surface lineup. And I really think this shift started with the Surface Pro 3, which for me was the first Surface that I, I really fell in love with. Um, to be sort of that North Star when it comes to like what we want our operating system capable and the hardware married to, you know, to really take advantage of that software. Mm -hmm. Because OEMs create great devices, but yeah. they've got their own priorities. And so sometimes we wanted to showcase how we thought the operating system should look and feel and a really premium build hardware. And, and we're really getting there now, and as you mentioned, with the devices spread out all yeah. over the place, just a huge variety of form factors and, and use cases. Now, I was really glad that you, you, you sort of caged that around Surface Pro 3. Because mm -hmm. it's always been my hypothesis. We see so many companies trying to walk into hardware spaces and then give up after like their second gen product. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I was so excited to see Microsoft push through that barrier. Because like yes. Surface One was so radical. We were going through that transition with Windows 8, right. which mm -hmm. was a little shaky. Yep. There were some new design elements that I think put off a lot of people in terms of conveyance. Mm -hmm. Like it was just new. Oh, certainly. Um, but by the time we were making it to the end of Surface Pro 2, not only had we won people over, but general consumers were starting to pay attention to that. That three-year cycle seems to be like if you can really iterate by beyond that point, you'll have a good argument for why you should be in the market. Right, and now we've got to that point where you know, we're tuning these devices and constantly adding more and more. The form factor is, especially with our flagship, the Pro 6, yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty similar to, to our previous iteration, but we're packing more and more into it because we've found that form factor that works. Because, yeah, we, we stuck with that idea. And we've seen a number of, of other uh, entrances, like uh, mm -hmm. competing products that are oh, trying yeah. to have a similar conversation with consumers. Exactly to what you guys and that's, started. That's a little what I was referring to at that North Star. It's not just for what we want our software to look like. We also want to show everyone else this is what's possible on, on a PC. You know, we're not relegated just to, to plastic clamshells. So a hundred percent. Okay, so let's start things off with the Surface Go. Yeah. Okay. Who is this for and what does this offer for people? So the Surface Go, which is which is this guy, this guy right here, uh, probably my favorite device currently because mm. I've it used to be really into ultralight backpacking, so trying to get, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, drill a hole in your spoon kind of thing just to save like an ounce, just <laughs> as light as you possibly can. So this device for me, um, what, you can do so much with it. You can, you know, you can, it's a perfect companion device. It's not something that I'm gonna be running, you know, Photoshop on, but this is something that I can do everything that I needed to do to get here today, right. whether that's email, you know, that's creating PowerPoints, that's of course, uh, watching movies on the plane, all of that I'm able to do here in a form factor that is incredibly small. I mean, it is so small, you put this thing in your backpack, you don't even remember it's there. Now, is that running Windows 10 in S mode? So this is Windows 10 in S mode, and that's okay. a really good call out. Um, Windows 10 in S mode is, is still pretty new for a lot of our customers out yeah. there. Uh, so this is not something that you'd be you know, building a PC with. This is something that you'd be purchasing 
on a device uh, right. like the Surface Go. And Windows 10 in S mode, if we're going to get back to holiday troubleshooting, it is one of those things that has really made my holidays a little bit easier, or I plan to. Um, my family gets sort of, yours as well, probably the trickle down of technology. It's like, right. this, you know, this, right. this three-year-old gaming PC is still great. It's going to be perfect for you, Dad. Uh, this device runs Windows 10 in S mode, which means that it is a, it is a more secure, it is a faster version of Windows, with the biggest difference being the, you know, if you're going to go download VLC, you would normally go, you know, uh, open up Edge, download it, it's there. Windows 10 S mode, it's only in the Windows Store. Right. right. It's, it's more app-centric. It is. And especially for the people who, you know, they've grown up using their phones, or that's what they're comfortable with now, it makes a lot of sense. It's mm -hmm. just one place to get all of your apps. Well, totally. this, this does seem to be Microsoft's answer to some of the tablet infrastructure oh, that, yeah. I, well, again, some of our competitors uh, in, in this space haven't really fulfilled that dream of a, a portable slate computing device that can sort of evolve or grow with different family members. Right. You know, like my grandmother kind of got off the Windows train around Vista to 7 mm -hmm. and went tablet right. for the ease of use. This mm -hmm. is now also an argument that could maybe bring her back into the Microsoft ecosystem. I, I totally agree. And my, my family, I've seen a similar sort of thing where they just say, well, these other devices, they're just so easy. It's just my, my phone. And so yeah. they end up carrying all of these devices around with them. It's kind of funny. They all do relatively the same thing. Right. Whereas with this one, especially for my dad, who's just learned how to edit the registry, which was kind of a terrifying thing. He's like, I, I, he wants to put all of his music on his computer. He's got 500 CDs. Uh, he learns you can get music for free online. We all know how that goes. And so that's right. something that he's trying to do. He doesn't understand right. all of it. I'm, I hope he's not watching this. Uh, he'd be so embarrassed. But no, truly, this is, this is really what I'm dealing with right now. This is something that I can give to him and know very clearly that mm -hmm. he is going to be much, much safer. It's going to be easier for him. Right. He's not going to you know, have any of these issues that you know, we all kind of enjoy yeah. dealing with and messing with. So from Microsoft's perspective, we've seen so many manufacturers making like flip and fold yeah. kinds mm -hmm. of designs. How, how has that conversation gone with consumers in the more slate-focused two-in-one right. kind of form factor that so, the Surface has really sort of dominated that conversation. Yeah, and it really started with, with, with this product, our Surface Pro 6, and the Surface Go is, you know, it looks like a smaller version mm -hmm. of that. Um, so far, people have really enjoyed it because you've got, you know, your sort of work mode, and then you have, you know, just rip the keyboard off, which, by the way, is nice that you can change the type cover out. You've got this right. premium, you know, fabric, the Alcantara on it. And then you've got all of a sudden your, your Netflix device or whatever you want to use this thing for. It makes it really easy to move back and forth between these different modes, work and play. Now, yeah. just to kind of stray from some of our talking points real of course, fast. Please. So I have an older lineup of Surface products. Mm -hmm. I have a Surface 2, yeah. one of the old RT. Yes. Was there any <laughs> conversation internally at Microsoft about returning to custom blades? Because I have the music sampler you have blade that? for the RT. Wow. And I would love to see some other like like a like a, a Photoshop blade or right. an Adobe Premiere blade so, or something so like that. So what he's talking about is instead of a instead of like a type cover, it is a custom designed type cover purpose built for video editing for for music and that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. It's got like it's it's got like a grid, a, yeah. a 4 by 4 grid that you could use as a sampler yeah. That's and you could very just sit there and like cool. punch and like create yeah. music on the fly. It was I, I remember awesome. Mike Shinoda demoing this yes. thing and I I was I was in love with it. Unfortunately, you know more about it than I do. You actually have one. <laughs> I have it. I love it. Yeah. I, I was just thinking about that last week. They, I've, I've not heard anything else around it, but now I know who to tell if I do hear anything. It, it would be, I think it'd be incredible for those specific industries. Yeah, I, and I know that, I mean, you know, Microsoft's installed their user base. Where you you want to cover as many people as possible. Exactly. But there was this opportunity, this little glimmer of, oh, this could be I know. really exciting. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think they've... They recognize that, that people do want more of these physical controls. One of my favorite accessories, and Newegg has it, uh, is the Surface Dial. Yes. Which is, which is really cool. Yeah, of course you can mess with stuff on a touch screen, but instead you can take Tactile. this dial. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It's the difference between if you've ever turned up the volume in a car that is a touch screen to change the volume. I hate it. You can't yeah. do it while right. driving. You have to look at it, make sure you got mm -hmm. it. Surface Dial, you know exactly what you're doing. It's a, it's a really nice and experience. I come from old school studio background where you don't want to take your eyes off the screen, so you have this whole controls, control exactly. surface right. of things that you can kind of move around and, and alter what you need to get your work done on.
Right. So is there anything cool uh, like that or otherwise about the Surface Go <laughs> that people would not be aware of that it's something yeah. that exists or that you can even do on a that's, Surface Go? That's a really good point, so I'll pick this guy back up. So uh, again, when I think of this device, I think of my companion device. Mm -hmm. This is a device that I can take with me to do anything. This is perfect for my dad, this is perfect for a student, for a working schmuck like myself. Like This is a wonderful, wonderful device. One of the things I don't be think people realize is like all of our Surface devices, we built this really premium device. But you'd expect we start stripping things out as we get to a lower price point. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, that's, that's really not the case. So one of my favorite features that not a lot of people know about the Surface lineup is Windows Hello. Are you guys familiar with Windows yeah. Hello? Mm -hmm. And have you seen this demoed it before? So Windows Hello. Please do it for yeah. us. So Windows Hello allows you to just look at the device and log right in. So for instance, if we we hold it up here. It's not going to do it's anything. It's like no, it's gonna say, no, you don't it's have not going to work. To this device. It just shut the screen off. It, like, yeah. I can't even look at you. Yeah, yeah that, it's that bad. But if I look at yeah. the device, <laughs> and if I, of course, a live demo, it's going to have doing it live. Doing yeah. it live. There we go. Well, and you're also backlit. There we, we go. Studio lighting. You'll right just there. have to trust me that it unlocked with my face. I didn't type anything in. But just looking at this device, it's wonderful. I can cool. walk by my office, just sort of look at my Surface devices, and they're instantly on. Yeah. Microsoft mandates like a 12-digit password. It's terrible. Okay. I never type it in anymore. That's one of the things I love about this guy. Great. Uh, so moving on to the Surface Pro 6, how is that different than the Go, and can you compare and contrast them a little bit for us? Yeah, it's bigger. Perfect, that's okay, it. Okay, great, let's cool. move on. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> so, Surface Pro 6, this is a device, whereas this is my companion device, I can mm -hmm. use it for almost everything. With this device, I truly have substantially more power. Right. So, between uh, the Pro 5 and the Pro 6, we have, you know, with the new 8th generation uh, Intel Core processors, we've doubled mm -hmm. the amount of physical cores in this. It's 67% faster than the previous generation of Surface Pro. Great. So, if you still are on those older generations, and many people, yeah. like us, we fell in love with the Pro 3, and then that's where a lot of people stopped. Yeah. This new Pro 6 is substantially faster. So that's the thing you're going to notice right out of the gate. The other thing, a couple TikTok cycles for oh, the yeah. channels and stuff. So. Yeah, and it, it's to be expected. Of course, yeah. it's going to be faster. Um, but just how fast it is, I think that's what takes a lot of people by surprise. So. Cool. Now, because we're, we're still talking about a two-in-one design, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and like I started the Surface train on the Surface Pro Two, okay, and then also playing with a Surface Two, right? The the the, the older uh, RT version. What have you guys found in terms of the usage? Because that, to me, Surface Go looks like the better argument for slate mode portability, mm -hmm. being able to use a tablet and have a keyboard thing. Um, Moving up in size, what has the response been? Like, do you guys track some of that usage of? Oh yeah. From customers and their feedback and what, how what many people, people are using, are using it to mm -hmm. go slate mode versus more of a laptop I like, replacement? I feel like it would be a laptop replacement for people probably right. more than slate mode. No? I think I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how I see most people using it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this this used to be my primary device. I've actually moved over to the Surface laptop because mm -hmm. I I don't particularly use it for the pen features. I'm not mm -hmm. an right. artist, but it's one of the things that I know people who are working in Photoshop. If they okay. want to work in Photoshop, yeah, they can do it here right. on the go. It's not really what it's designed to do. Again. Right. A companion piece. Whereas this, you take that, you take that type cover off, and you have this slate that is substantially more productive. You don't need, you know, a separate pad. You can look at directly what you're working on. Yeah. That's a huge benefit. Um, it's also just the form factor. People do like the way the thing looks. You know, we all mm. want, as we can see around us, we want to customize our cases. Pleasing, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you look at these devices, especially our type covers, uh, they're they're wrapped in this very premium fabric, Alcantara. And it gives you a really nice feel. Mm -hmm. It also gives you choice. You know, we can change. That's why we don't bundle the type covers in them anymore. Because people, if I just put in a standard type cover, someone's going to really hate it. People want their, right. their choice in colors. Right. So. And now you mentioned the Surface Pen mm -hmm. being primarily for artists or people using Photoshop. What other type of people do you normally find get the biggest benefit from the Surface Pen? So for me, what I use the Surface Pen all the time is when I write you know, emails or something like that, I'll do a little doodle at the very end of it, which is kind of a ridiculous thing that I enjoy doing. <laughs> so just a little doodle, a little personal touch to it. Um, the, the place that I was most surprised to see it is when I, uh, we were looking at purchasing a house uh, my real estate agent had a Surface, and that's where you signed all of your paperwork. Got it. Wow. Yeah, it was just that's it was smart. it was the pen. It was an older version of pen, but whatever. She had the pen. You just sign it right there. I'm not an artist, nor was she, but it's so so familiar because of that this this three by two aspect ratio. It's like a legal pad. It's very easy to hold. Sign. Do whatever you need to do. 
you know, you don't have to be an artist at all. That's take great. That's of much it. easier than the way I had to do things with my real estate agent. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you also uh, mentioned the type cover coming in different colors. Are there other options as far as the type covers go as well? Yeah. So there's there's a variety of options. Um, different colors. There's also different color devices now as well. Mm. So with our latest um, version of the Surface uh, Pro 6 on the Surface Laptop 2. You can get it in any color you want, so long as it's silver. As long as it's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that used to be the argument at least when we went into, <laughs> into our stores. But now you've got color options. Right. You've got, you know, these, these variety of different colors. Well, and that's what I want to move on to, because you were saying that now for your use, because mm -hmm. you, you get to play with all these toys, that now you've moved over to the Surface Laptop. Yeah. And this is actually the one that I've been seeing. I, it it took on more than I was expecting it to. Mm -hmm. So I was in tech podcasts going, what is Microsoft doing returning to a traditional laptop right. form factor? Yeah. They, they're not even really reinventing the wheel here. Right. What's going on? The Surface was so boundary pushing. This is so normal. Right. And yet, my sister got one. My wife is on one for work now. Oh, wow. Like we're seeing, I'm seeing that one expand way faster than I thought it would, that Microsoft logo on the back. Right. It's, well, when we first saw it announced, the, the Surface Laptop, the original one that came out, I think we all had the same sort of expectations. We're like, well, what is it going to do? Yeah. When is the screen going to pop off? Like, does it rotate around? It's like, oh, it's just a, it's a clamshell. Does it laptop. hover? Come yeah, on, exactly. Microsoft. It's got to be something. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, it, it doesn't do any of those things. But what it does do is, you know, what, especially those of us who, who really need to work to have a portable device who mm -hmm. don't maybe need those artistry features, we don't need to detach, we need something with solid battery life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A clamshell laptop does that very well. Yeah. And, and I, that kind of goes back to what I was talking about with those premium devices, the North Star. We wanted to show, yeah, you can even take an old tired category and really reinvent it with you know, the addition of, of Alcantara fabric that yeah. I've never seen anywhere outside of a luxury sports car. And, and kind of keeping up with some of the, the, the feedback questions, mm -hmm. what, what has the response been to a touchscreen? Because after going Surface, like, you know, even though I'm on a gaming laptop, I, I refuse to buy a laptop now if it doesn't have a touchscreen. Right. Mm -hmm. So this w was, was this um, the, 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 the sort of Trojan horse to get people interacting with touch? Or was it more a response to people that didn't want to give up that as a feature that were already hmm. part of the Surface Fold? It's, so with, with Surface, you know, a, a big part of integrating touch goes back to Windows 8. Yeah. You know, we really wanted people to try this because we saw, I mean, what do we all have in our pockets? We've all got our phones, we've mm -hmm. all got our tablets, we've got multiple devices that really do the same thing, and mm -hmm. our, our, these devices were the ones that didn't have touch. So we wanted to move that forward with our Surface lineup. Of course, all of our devices have touch, it's just natural. When you move over to a device that does not have touch, I, I continually poke the screen. Yeah. I, I always, like one of my favorite things is to watch devices that don't have touch and people continually touch the screen. They cannot break that habit. Uh, if you've ever watched a little kid, they'll come up if they're watching something on the TV and they'll try and move Touch the, the TV. image. Yeah. It, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't work This isn't way. what I want to watch. Right. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. It doesn't work that way on some screens. But with our Windows PCs, the entire operating system is designed to work that way and of course our hardware along with it. That's great that you've seen such a response to that. Um, what about the audio experience on the Surface Laptop? What are the speakers like? Yeah, so I, I told you I moved over to the Surface Laptop. I bounced between all of them because mm -hmm. I've access to all of them. So I'm always trying to make the argument, which one should I use this week or this month? The Surface Laptop 2 is what I keep coming back to. Uh, the speakers are unique. Uh, they're actually underneath the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So they're called omnisonic speakers, and they're substantially louder and richer in my opinion, I might tick some of the other design people off, but they're substantially more rich than any of our other offerings because it's just this huge speaker underneath. And the sound is really booming. It's perfect for like, it's boring stuff that I do, but conference calls. But it's great if you're watching right. a movie and you really do want to hear more than you know, your average speaker can sure. give you. It's, it's just surprisingly loud. Most of the reviews have indicated that as well. They're just surprised by it. Mm -hmm. And you've mentioned the uh, Alcantara fabric Once several times, uh, that it's a luxury sports car fabric. Please tell us more about how that <laughs> okay. came about, what it does for the laptop, et cetera. Okay, so I think one of the reasons I, I love it most is I, I, maybe I'm a nervous typer, I get sweaty palms, and, and you get these plastic devices or even the metal ones, mm -hmm. and after a while it kind of feels I don't know, it doesn't feel great. You feel clammy when, you know, right on your palm. It's just or sticky. Yeah, it's yeah. not that it's it's not that nice of an experience. But with this Alcantara, which yes, I have mentioned a few times, I'm in mm -hmm. love with the fabric. Uh, you you really do get this premium feel. It is unique. I don't know of any other really devices that use this uh, in such a way that we do. It just 
one more thing to set it apart. And you'll find it on the Surface Pro 6, the Surface uh, Laptop 2, and of course the Surface Go all have those options. It's something we kind of complained about just in our own sort of ramblings about other mobile tech. Mm -hmm. I'm getting real tired of just like glass and metal being the default right. materials. Like I have an old Motorola phone that has a leather back. And right. you're like, I like holding like that. that phone. Yeah. That these material choices, I, I don't, we've, we've barely scratched the surface on other things we could do to make something nice. Agreed. And, and that leather, it ages, it gets that patina. It looks so cool. It does. Yeah. yeah and it's three, or, three years old now. It started yeah. out as this bright blue. And now it's all worn and cracked what? and like edged. You know, like three yes. years of glass or three years of metal just looks dingy. Dingy. Yeah, yeah it's it not looks nice. Three years of glass in my hair looks just cracked. cracked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, my so devices dry. don't last that long either. <laughs> um, okay, so last but not least okay. in the Surface family, we have the Surface Book 2. Yes. We, we, had, um, we had Microsoft on a year ago. Right. Yes, guys promised yes. to bring in a Surface Book 2. This you has finally been around made it. for a yeah. while. <laughs> uh, so tell us, please, what, what are the selling points of the current iteration of the Surface Come on, Book bring 2? In this bad boy. So this is the Surface Book 2. This is the one that uh, I always look at. I want, I want to try this device. This is the 15 inch Surface Book 2. So this is a okay. massive screen. It's a gorgeous screen. Um, the biggest selling point, of course, and what's most unique about it, uh, is this hinge. Mm -hmm. So this fulcrum hinge is, is pretty unique because it actually expands and allows the entire thing, it sort of rolls out to support what is most of the PC living inside of yeah. this thing. Because it's got a different weight balance than a traditional yeah. laptop. It does, yeah, it does have a, dif a different weight balance. And actually, that's part of what this hinge does is to support that weight balance. Because mm -hmm. if it didn't have that extra extension of the base, it would fall, it would fall over, mm -hmm. exactly. So what's most unique about this thing uh, is the ability to detach this from the base. Whoa, so very fancy. Your, it, is, it is pretty fancy. So you've got your laptop mode, but you've also got your clipboard mode. and this. This becomes a huge screen for doing whatever it is you need to do. It's perfect if you've got this on a workstation and I need to walk down the hall and, and show you an idea or design. And they both have pretty good battery life. Connected, it's about mm -hmm. 17 hours, Great. which is pretty incredible. Because yeah. well, we're talking, again, it, it, this, this is another step up from the Pro. Yeah, it, it is a, if, if you are someone who needs, you know, quite a bit of processing power, you need a 1060 graphics card with yeah. six gigs, like, this is the device for you. I, I don't need that. I want it, but I don't need <laughs> it. Uh, and so, for me, it, it would be wasted. But I know many people would love this device for, for you know, artistry, for, you know, engineering work, CAD, all that kind of thing. Um, my big thing is always coming back to gaming PCs have made some of the best arguments for video editing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now having another entry in that where I wouldn't have to sacrifice a touchscreen, I could go multi-mode mm -hmm. and go slate yeah. and then still be able to sit down and like actually render. Yeah, and have a battery life a longer device. than 20 minutes. Exactly. So it's like I, I had to unplug yeah. for this, and I'm real nervous. Yeah, yeah. With I this, have to plug back and, in before and I refused over. to unplug <laughs> for this one because I'm, I'm rocking an <laughs> this OLED range screen anxiety. This, it's terrible. Just, <laughs> battery life is not its main selling so point. So it's hilarious when you say range anxiety because what we mean by range anxiety is how far the charger cord right. range <laughs> yeah. will. Yeah. Yeah. Extend. And with this, you don't have to worry about that. So. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so we have covered all of the Surface products that you brought with you today. How do you choose between them? Like if someone asks you for a recommendation, mm -hmm. how do you help them find the right Surface product for them? Just like with, with any piece of hardware, I want to know what it is that they want to do with it mm -hmm. or what their, their previous version couldn't do. Mm -hmm. You know, I want, for, for games, it's easy. Like I wanted to play this game at this setting, couldn't do it. That leads pretty naturally, you know, for that qualifying question, into what, into what they need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for this, I want to know, you know, what are they what are they doing for work? What are they doing for play? Um, what do they wish they could do? That kind of thing. And that sort of helps me decide into each of these buckets because you can mix and match. But you know, especially with your Surface Book Two, with your laptop, with your Go, you've got a lot of a lot of options. Just want to make sure I get you the it's right some one. Some crossover mm -hmm. between. Exactly. Right. But there might be an opportunity where maybe they should look at moving from a Go to a Pro or something like exactly. that. Exactly. And I, I want to make sure that they're that they're not buying way more than they need or they're not buying enough. So sure. All right. So Excellent. I got I got to put you on the spot before we let Please. you go. Yes. As someone who has basically every single Windows phone that was ever made in a, in a collection on my bookshelf a of, collection? of sad. I was, I was all in. Juan was all about the I, Windows I phone. I loved my Lumias. I've been seeing Microsoft make some interesting moves towards supporting ARM mm -hmm. chipsets, mm -hmm. always on connected LTE mm -hmm. devices. Skype has right. gotten a lot better yes, it has. over the last uh, year or so. 
could there be an opportunity to revisit some discussion of mobility as we're looking at Windows S and an app ecosystem that is now starting to catch up with other mobile uh, infrastructures? As, uh, we'll, we'll back up for just a second. As a fellow lover of Windows Phone, that's where I started my job, was, was talking okay. about Windows Phone. Those cameras. Yeah. I, I actually, so I'm, I'm, the 1020. I'm, I'm, cutting, I'm cutting a video right now mm -hmm. about a $40 Android phone, okay. which basically has the same stuff that the Lumia 550 had three years ago. Right. Okay. That, I mean, like, the competition has been in a holding pattern for entry-level devices since the Lumia 520. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they were excellent phones. Uh, that's kind of... As a talking head, they don't tell me things too important. They, <laughs> they really don't want me to. They're, they don't want to tell no. people like us. No, oh. right. I can, yeah, I can right, right, right. feel the pressure coming from headquarters <laughs> right. that Microsoft doesn't no. comment on rumor speculation. Uh, but boy, would I love to see all those little pieces that I, you know, right. we've been hearing uh, you know, come together and mean something. I, whether it's mobile, they would never tell me. Gotcha. But I, I too loved our previous you know, attempt at, at mobile. So. Awesome. Well, Alex, thank you so much for coming by <laughs> today. Thank you for being on the show. I had to make you sweat a little us. bit. No, it's Apologies. okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Okay, so coming up next, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to keep things rolling with one of our biggest shows of the whole year. We'll be talking to Generali about digital identity security mm -hmm. and their partnership with Intel. Before we do, though, here's a few deals we wanted to highlight to, uh, to kick things off to get you started. Yes, so. indeed. Uh, if you're looking for a new Intel CPU, CPU, check out the 8-core i7-9700K Coffee pay. Lake processor, uh, which we have discounted right now for less than $410. You'll want a motherboard for that chip, of oh, course, yeah, and one. we've got you covered there as well. Take a look at the ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming motherboard, available only at Newegg for less than $120. And uh, you, know, you have a, a processor, you have mm -hmm. a motherboard. <laughs> You need somewhere to store stuff. Do it. Yeah, totally. Uh, we also have the Intel 545S, the 545S, 512 gigabyte SATA SSD available for $30, $35 off. It's even an even better deal than my stumble there. $35 off. Perfect if you're looking to upgrade your internal storage. Yes. Um, all right. Well, we're going to be right back with Generali to discuss identity theft and data security, so stick around. Jill has four bags, a conference call in three minutes, and only two hands. On days like these, things tend to fall through the cracks. Luckily, Jill has me, Iris. Identity protection to keep her data safe, leaving Jill to, well, juggle a little less. Jill can sometimes accidentally open emails from questionable senders and buy designer dresses from a website less than perfect security. Because the idea of a scam or a stolen credit card doesn't even cross Jill's mind, with my 360 degree identity protection, I let Jill get on with her life. And even if fraud does happen, she knows she's secure with my award-winning team of specialists available 24-7 to help quickly resolve any problem. But Jill needs to keep running if she plans on beating last week's time. Jill has 101 things to think about. Identity theft shouldn't be one of them. Discover your preferred partner in identity protection with Iris on Watch. Visit irisidentityprotection.com to learn more. Welcome back to Newegg Now. We're coming to the end of 2018, and we all know that more of our lives than ever take place on computers, in our phones <laughs> and throughout the digital world, which makes things convenient and lets us have a lot of fun, but it also exposes us to risks like identity theft. Well, and especially for our audience, I think they're pretty well versed. Yeah, like, I think they know, like, well, most of my life is on the internet. So fortunately, right. some of the world's best tech companies are taking identity security more seriously in this era. And here to tell us about that, we have Greg Palmer, uh, from Gen Generali Global yes. Assistance. I hope yeah. you don't mind if we just AKA that yeah, to Generali. A it's a mouthful. Perfect. So yeah, we just, sure. you just yeah, Generali, GGA. <laughs> yeah, either one works. Perfect. Uh, so before we dive deeper into the conversation, tell us a little bit about what you do for Generali. Yeah, uh, my role with Generali is Senior Business Development Director. Um, I am responsible for establishing strategic partnerships. Um, we have some of the largest partnerships um, with some of the largest organizations, um, such as Intel. Um, we, uh, Generali Global Assistance, is a division of the large Generali group mm -hmm. um, out of Italy, and we offer assistance services. And one of those assistance services is identity protection. Cool. 
So just helping people safeguard their personal mm -hmm. information. Is it, is it more, yeah. uh, just because, and you'll pardon, I mean, I read up on the company a little bit sure. before, but especially for our audience, is this more a corporate facing company or a more consumer facing company? Both. Yeah, so you're both. trying to find avenues of protection for yep. for all kinds oh, no, of different no, no. markets. It's, so. it's primarily a consumer-based product, Okay, okay. Um, per protecting consumers against their own personal identity um, and, and protecting them against what they should be safeguarding the most, which is um, Social Security, driver's yeah. license, and all gotcha. of the personal information. So okay. what, So in, in, in already having like a consumer-facing strategy, how did this partnership between Intel get yeah. started out? Great question. I think what you, what you have to realize is the connection between data and personal, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when Intel was looking to enhance their product and create more of a, a protective consumer-based product, right. they turned to us to be able to connect those two dots. So with this, with this product that we've been able to provide with Intel, not only are we able to um, enhance their overall security measures, but we're also be able to provide the, a, a better customer experience. Because right. the beginning of this year, we, we heard a lot about some of the threats that these sure. computing platforms, we didn't even understand yes. you know, like the specter and the meltdowns and what, what bad actors would have access to. Yep. That sort of arrived on the world stage in a very public fashion. When Intel was looking at their relationships and reaching out to companies like yours, was it was it more like, I, I feel like there would have been a danger of them trying to reinvent the wheel and do everything from the ground up to try and safeguard their products right. when they could develop a strategic relationship with a company that's already working in that space. Yeah, absolutely. We certainly fit, fit a hole um, that they had in a more comprehensive security and protective um, solution that they were looking to achieve. Got it. Excellent. So before we dive into exactly what you guys are doing to help protect data, let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what exactly identity theft is. Uh, so yeah. we hear a lot about it, but it's not always clear on what exactly it means. So how do you define identity theft? Yeah, so there, there are, you're, to your point. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different definitions and there's a lot of confusion around mm -hmm. what identity theft is. Mm -hmm. And I wish like Alex, I had some sexy, cool, gadgets say, and toys if, to share. If we were like local news, we would just have a graphic of someone in a hoodie with like green text right. on a computer monitor right. hacking the mainframe, yeah. right? That's how it works. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it's one of those things where, you know, Alex came out and he showed the really cool surface and all the technology and all the gadgets that we want for Christmas yeah. mm -hmm. and for the holidays. Um, it's like going out and buying a new car, yeah. right? Um, you go out and you buy the shiny, sexy, cool new car. Mm -hmm. And then what's the next thing you do? Get insurance. Is you insure it, right? <laughs> right? And so I'm the insurance piece of this, right? Got it. So he shares the cool stuff, By and the way, I'm sharing the totally necessity. By the way, that's totally sexy. That's yeah. totally the sexy part. Get a little yes. older, we've got families, you're like, oh, I have to, I should pay attention to that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but to answer your question, identity theft is essentially when somebody gathers your personal information mm -hmm. and is using it fraudulently. And more times than not, it's for financial gain. Got it. And, and so, I mean, we, we were even having some conversations before the show. I, I don't even remember how we got there, but we were talking about some of the credit card breach yes. scandals oh, and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that, too. Um, why do you think, and especially from Generali's perspective, that identity theft has become so prevalent, such a prevalent issue in these days, this current market? Well, Juan, you mentioned data breaches. Mm -hmm. So data breaches, it seems like every time we open our computer, All every time. time we look at the news, there's a new data breach. Yeah. The last one just happened within the hotel hospitality. I shouldn't say the last one, but the last one that's really caught the yeah. news. Um, it's happening, and it's happening regularly. The other realization is that we are becoming much more connected mm -hmm. through our laptops, through our surfaces, mm -hmm. through all the sexy, cool stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, what it's doing is it's increasing our vulnerability. Of course. Because we're exchanging information Mm -hmm. and our personal information is much more accessible now. And so there's a whole variety of different reasons why identity theft has become one of the fastest growing crimes. Mm -hmm. um, but those are two, two areas to really focus in on is mm -hmm. how available our personal information is for a variety of different reasons. And, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it does seem like the risk reward 
has yes. the pendulum on that has swung way in the favor of bad actors. Yeah, I yeah. was going to mention that as well. It feels like, at, at least from the public perspective, it feels like there's not much that law enforcement can do after the fact. Right. So your best bet is to protect yourself ahead of time because once it's happened, they're well, not going to go after that person. It's already done. Yep, you're, you're, you're spot on. We have to take, just like we insure our cars, mm -hmm. just like we insure our homes, mm -hmm. we have to take pre preventative measures to protect ourselves. Because right. to your point, it's not going to be given to us. Um, and if you've become a victim of identity theft, you realize how challenging it is yeah. to restore your identity. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even if you've had your purse stolen or you've lost your phone, sure. right? Yeah. Especially your phone. What's the first thing we think of is, Oh shoot! All of my information. Right. Where's my phone? All of me is right. in that right. portable pod. Right. Yeah. And do I have insurance on my phone? But what we don't realize is what happens if somebody gains access to my phone, right. and because of our data and technology-driven environment that we live in, mm -hmm. all of our information is stored on that phone. Yeah. So, so what are some of the numbers like? You know, how, how many people would you say mm -hmm. 2018 are actually victimized by identity theft? Yeah, so recent studies want to indicate that 16 million um, victims of identity theft in 2018. Wow. That means two cases of identity theft every second. Wow. <laughs> that's and terrible. I would imagine a lot of those people don't even know that they're victims. No. Well, that's the other thing is with data breaches, uh -huh. right? Uh, identity thieves are smart, yeah. right? They know what to do with your personal information, and they know when to use it. Mm -hmm. So they realize... If I gather Greg's social security number, I'm not going to immediately use it because he knows, oh, I just was a victim of, right. idea, an, a, a, of a data attack. breach, yeah. right? So now I'm going to take preventative and proactive measures. They're going to hold on to that information and they'll use it. Well, and the hotel breaches were so scary because like, I might have stayed at a hotel two years ago. And that information would still be on file. Right. right. That, that mm -hmm. would then be on a compromised network that yeah. then they could gain access to. And then a year from then. So I might be victimized by this process four years Absolutely. after I actually did business with Absolutely. that company. Yeah, they'll just hold on to that information until they see a window of opportunity. Right. And, and that window of opportunity is usually a lag time and a gap yeah. between the actual <laughs> occurrence, right? right? Sure. And when they when, when they think it's an appropriate time to use it. And some people think that the only way to protect themselves against identity theft is to just not be connected at all. You know, they're <laughs> oh, like, well, yeah. if I never use a public Wi-Fi, if I don't use social media, yeah. I'll be fine. You know, then I'll be right. fine. But I, I feel like increasingly that that's becoming a non-reality for our world. Yeah. For what our world is becoming, you almost you have to be connected. You have to yeah. communicate in these ways. So it's great that you guys are providing another option. You would have to find a big, big rock to live under yeah. if you didn't take advantage of all of our technology, right? And, but because of the technology, we live on social media, right? We, we live on email, we live on texting, and all of that is data exchange mm -hmm. that can be intercepted. Yeah, what are some other ways that people can get your information just so that everyone can be careful out there and know what to look for? Oh, to protect your personal information? Like we said, like public Wi-Fi is a great way to, uh, for them to take your yeah. data. What are some other ways yeah. that people typically so do you'll that? So ha you'll have to be really careful with public Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. right? Um, remember, public is public, mm -hmm. right? There are eyes and there are ears everywhere. Mm -hmm. But just like the physical eyes and ears, there's also technology. Um, if you're in an airport, be <laughs> right. extremely careful. There's technology, there's scanners out there mm -hmm. that can quickly intercept your personal information. I even love like when I'll try and connect to like uh, an airport Wi-Fi and you can see there are four yeah. other networks that are named the same right. that aren't, right. Right. I think, connected to the actual airport. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, be careful. Don't share or enter personal information yep. in a, on a public Wi-Fi. Yep, right? okay. The other thing is, and I can't emphasize this enough, passwords. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, 55% of us use the same password. And sometimes the security is overlooked by just convenience. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but by doing that, we leave ourselves extremely vulnerable as sure. well. So make sure that your passwords are unique um, and secure. Now, has Generali seen anything? Like, because I feel like there's also been an uptick of old school attempts, like social engineering attempts to get at people's data. I think there's some recent research saying that if we don't do anything about spam and robocalls, 
that mm. next year, 50% of every phone call in North America is gonna be a robo wow. phishing yeah. scam. What has your company seen for your clients, for your customers, in regards to trying to protect them against old school intrusions into getting their data? Yeah, well, I would say the best way to protect yourselves, not only from old school, but just identity theft in general, mm -hmm. is being very diligent and vigilant with your personal information in terms okay. of, of checking it frequently. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So the old school way of, and it's still, very relevant today is dumpster diving. Have you, ever, have you yeah. heard of dumpster diving? Oh, and just oh, mailbox totally. theft. Yeah, straight yeah, up mailbox yeah. theft. Yeah, especially against like some of like my older family members. Mm -hmm. I think we have a case of uh, identity theft in the family that likely came from mm -hmm. through yeah, yeah through dumpster diving through solicitations. So one of the easiest and best ways is to do is what we call opt out services. So now you're opting out of all the solicitation, all the direct mail, and and that is an excellent preventative way. Um, to to protect yourself mm -hmm. against that type of identity okay. theft. Nice. All right, so let's get back into some of the tech stuff, though. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. from Generali's perspective, uh, we'd be looking at like keeping antivirus software. Antivirus. Up to date. Make sure your mm -hmm. antivirus and security softwares are up to date. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then also maybe like even just because I'm always shocked when I pick up a family member's phone or computer yep. and I go into settings and they haven't run any app or system updates in yeah. like the whole life yeah. of mm -hmm. the product that yep. they've been using. Yep, so yeah, be current on that. As we go back to dumpster, dumpster diving, it's kind of an old school, but again, still very relevant. Um, kind of the, the data equivalent of that mm -hmm. is your phones, right? When you turn in your phone, mm. well, uh, potentially when you lose your phone, if you hand your phone down, if you sell it, your laptop, your Surface, whatever it is, need to make sure that you clear that you out. You scrubbed it out, yeah. yeah. Because that would be the equivalent of dumpster diving. Now you're getting all that personal information that's um, well, through data. And again, like just from working in media, it's it's disgustingly easy to recover like memory yes. card yes. data yes. and stuff yes. like Absolutely. that too. Flash yeah. drive so much data. That you think yeah. it's yep. been erased, but it hasn't yeah. really all, been erased. All of your, uh, you know, your internet searches, right, and your history mm -hmm. and your cache and yep. everything else, you need mm -hmm. to make sure that you wipe that out uh, before you get rid or, or hand down or pass along your your device. And talk to us a little bit about VPNs and how yeah. that can help keep you safe. Yeah, so VPN is obviously an, an added layer of security, mm -hmm. right? It adds that layer, uh, that barrier, um, especially within a, a, a public Wi-Fi. So if you have the ability to get on a VPN when you're on in a public space, you're just adding that additional layer of security. It's an extra Great. barrier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then also in general, when you are surfing, um, and you're checking out sites, just make sure they're secure sites, yep. right? Because there's too many fraudulent sites out there. I, ca I kind of blew a, a, a friend's mind. It was like, just HTTPS. S. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. Yeah, look for the S. Look yep. for that, yep. where, where's the S? Yeah, especially when you're purchasing, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, purchasing, because there is, and, and I'm sure you're probably familiar with this, but there there is an approach called phishing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, where identity thieves can get into your device and start fishing for your personal information. Yeah, we start getting a lot. I, I mean, you, you, we all do. It's just like, yeah. I'm pretty sure that email from my bank didn't come right. yep. from my bank. Nope. That doesn't look yeah. like their thing. Yeah, I had, I had a transaction from Pajamagram, right? Oh. It was $500, <laughs> so I thought, man, my wife is buying these elaborate Woo! pajamas. <laughs> New PJs. Right? Wow. And so I called in, like, and well, I spoke with customer service, not. and I and I promise you, it was in a basement somewhere. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, and so they put me on pause. They researched it, supposedly researched it, came back to me and said, "Hey, we have identified that this was fraudulent. We're just going to need your bank account information <gasps> and your driver's license." What? I'm like, "No, I'll take care uh, of that on my not. own." I'm good. So because I had an identity protection product. I was able to reach out to and our resolution team and they were able to resolve and it. Wow. respond much more quickly than Absolutely. if you were just pounding the pain yeah. on yourself. Yeah. Before, before we move on to, to talk about uh, the actual iris, uh, I was wondering what are your thoughts and, and generally thoughts on things like password managers? Mm. Because some of them seem, again, we, we don't wanna completely trade security for convenience, but then there are also concerns that maybe that might be a single point of failure. Right, if someone gets into your, your password, password manager, manager, then they have everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of those password managers are, again, um, highly encrypted, highly right. secure, mm -hmm. um, and, and, they're, and they are, are safe, 
Right. We are advocates of password managers. Okay. We believe in them. Um, and, and we believe there's a lot of good. Now, password managers can do a lot more than just store passwords, mm -hmm. um, but they can also track and determine if, if um, there's been a threat, there's been a threat, right. if mm -hmm. there's any type of compromise with that password. Excellent. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so let's talk more specifically about what uh, people can do to help protect their data. Sure. Tell us about Iris Identity Protection. Sure. How can that help people? Yeah. So Iris, uh, Iris Identity Protection comes in several different forms, mm -hmm. right? Um, as a partnership with Intel on participating products through Newegg, um, you are able to get what we call Iris Assist. Mm -hmm. Iris Assist gives you 24 access to our US-based resolution team out of Bethesda, just outside of Washington, DC. Okay. Nice. They're going to be there to help and assist you in case you run into or you feel that you have become a victim of identity theft. At going back to our earlier conversation, if you've ever become a vic if you've ever been a victim mm -hmm. of identity theft, you understand all of the processes, all the legwork that it's you've got to do. Ending. Right, yeah. I'm, contacting I'm, your financial institutions, yeah. con uh, the credit. If you ever called into the credit bureau, I mean that can be just a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I'm, right? I'm I try still, to do it all online because I can't handle yeah, calling. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm still from from uh, four years ago. I yeah. still have special pin codes with the IRS. Oh sure. yeah, so do sure. we. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's so many different points of contact that you're going to have to reach out to to ensure that you're protected. The Iris Assist provides you with basically just a one stop Great. where we can assist you with all of that. Great. Now, through our partnership with Intel, we are also, for those that are looking for more of a comprehensive product, mm -hmm. so the Iris Assist is going to provide you with that resolution support. But if you want the monitoring, if you want um, the added protection, we, um, there's also a new technology um, going back to our earlier conversation around anti-keylogging software, mm. right? Oh, interesting. Um, that's also built into uh, a more comprehensive product that's that's also available for those that are looking for that added protection. Okay, great. So Iris Assist is after the fact, and then you have other offerings mm -hmm. that can help protect beforehand. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. great. So is that uh, what Iris Plus is? Can you talk to Iris us a little Plus, bit about that? That's Iris Plus. Okay. So Iris Plus is that more comprehensive product where uh, for the for the individuals that want more. Great. Want yeah. more of that proactive, preventative mm -hmm. service versus just the resolution support after the fact. Now, I mean, obviously, uh, you wouldn't want to just put a price on security and you know how much time and effort it takes to mm -hmm. recover from uh, a, a bad data breach, but um, what would that but look what like? Is that price? What, <laughs> is, what is that price for, for like Iris Plus if someone were concerned about mm -hmm. stepping up to that, that oh, if they wanted to purchase Iris Plus, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I believe it's nine ninety nine. But right. just go to newegg.com and you and it would be available. So an insurmountable price barrier, guys. It's right. like a Netflix <laughs> subscription. That's nine dollars and ninety nine cents. By the way, not nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. Um, so what <laughs> else? Thank you for the yeah, clarification. Gotta clarify that. Uh, you're talking about insurmountable prices. I and was like, I know month, there's going to be right. at least one person right. out there. I was going to uh, say. So what else can you tell us about Iris working with Intel and how that provides an advantage over other identity monitoring yeah, did, programs? Did that give Generali any any extra resources mm -hmm. for their end? I'm sure that that collaboration had to work both ways to and get we, that kind of listen, access. Listen, because of the vulnerability that we all face um, within technology and with mm -hmm. data exchange, mm -hmm. we're always looking for partnerships, okay. right? Um, to really emphasize not only the sense the security of our data, but working with technology companies to ensure the protection of their customers, Got it. right? So when this opportunity came with Intel to say, hey, we want to create more of a comprehensive security package mm -hmm. to include identity protection, it was a natural fit mm -hmm. from a service perspective as well as a partner perspective. Those are the partnerships that we're looking at right. for those organizations that are really truly looking for innovation Mm -hmm. added layer of security, and to increase the total value proposition to their customers. Yeah, and especially access to such a huge Absolutely. section of the yeah. tech market. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Well, um, uh, thank you so much. Uh, if any thank of you, you out there are interested in learning more about yes. Iris Identity Security, there is a link in the description below this video on YouTube and Facebook. So make sure you check that out. Yes. And Greg, thank you so much for coming by Thanks today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank wonderful you. wonderful to come to Southern California right? in the winter. Uh, right? I bet. Yeah. Beautiful. So, I mean, like, that that's the appropriate windbreaker, right? For Southern California. Totally. I'm from Salt Lake City, so it's not the appropriate one for Salt Lake City. Just t tell me it's not.
not cracking you up when you see people in North Face gear and it's 60 degrees <laughs> outside in here LA. in SoCal. It, it's we we all have funny. thin blood now. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I, I go back to Pennsylvania for the holidays and I bring my heaviest LA jacket and it and your scar it does right? not cut it it no. doesn't it doesn't even scratch no so. I freeze my buns off <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all right so after freezing our buns off we'll be right back with some more deals but uh let's check out a quick video of mm -hmm. iris identity theft protection software in action and we'll be right back after that Iris Easy to Use Online Dashboard was developed by award-winning user experience experts to provide customers with an overview of their identity risk level and a hassle-free way to manage it. With Iris Advanced Identity and Credit Monitoring, fraud is detected at its inception as Iris scours the deepest corners of the internet to search for compromised credentials and potentially damaging use of personal information. Customers can monitor unlimited account and identification information, as well as their credit score, report and history in one central dashboard. Alerts will show if any suspicious activities, such as changes to a credit profile, high-risk transactions or compromised credentials are detected so that customers can immediately take action to minimize damage. Iris services can also be extended to family members so that they too can experience the peace of mind of knowing their identity is protected. Parents can monitor minor children's information and set up separate linked accounts for adult family members by simply entering their name and email address. Enrollment is easy and takes only a few seconds. Iris Online Data Protection Suite can be downloaded directly from the dashboard, adding an extra layer of protection to existing antivirus, anti-spyware or firewall software. Your identity belongs only to you. Keep it safe with Iris Identity Protection by Generali Global Assistance. Welcome back to Newegg Now. Believe it or not, we're actually coming up to the end of the show today. Say the, what? The time has flown by. Indeed, uh, for the whole year, as a matter of fact. This year went, I mean, this year felt like the longest decade ever and like the shortest week Simultaneously I've at the same week. time. Yes, exactly. Um, but before we wrap up today's show, we want to take one more look at the deals on newegg.com slash newegg now. And remember that these are live right now and they will last through the end of the day today or mm -hmm. while supplies last, whichever comes first. So if you see something you like, don't, don't wait, wait too long. Just go don't ahead and pull it. the trigger. Just, just mm -hmm. get it. So we have a great deal on a Gigabyte X299 motherboard, which you can pick up for $30 off. Perfect for unleashing the power of the monster CPU that you'd plug into that thing. We also have some great deals on printers from HP and Samsung. Yep. Some sweet streaming and capture gear from Elgato. Yes. Uh, you can get the Elgato Game Capture HD 60S for less than $125, or the Stream Deck for less than $95. So if you're interested in upping your streaming game, you will definitely want to check those out. Yeah, I'm rocking an in HD 60. It is good times nice. getting some good uh, video feed off of my yep. gaming hardware. There's all kinds of awesome stuff on that Newegg Now page. Uh, we also have an NVIDIA Shield TV. Ooh. Mm -hmm. A Sennheiser PXC 550 wireless headset. I just spent some time with the GSP 550 uh, wired headset. I definitely like to fanboy out on Sennheiser okay. gear. Nice. Excellent headsets. Uh, we have a Corsair Hydro Series H100i CPU cooler. Uh, which I was using for a while too. Definitely great. A, a great way to get into some water cooling. All discounted for the day today. So whatever right. you're looking for, chances are you'll find something that will be up your alley or up, uh, you know, for maybe a potential gift right. on that Newegg Now page. Go check it out. All right. Well, let's finish things off with one of the best deals we've ever had on this show. This is really unbelievable. Let's do this. Uh, right now, you can pick up a top of the line Samsung Q9F 75 inch smart TV with QLED. 4K, UHD, and HDR for almost $2,800 off. <laughs> you heard that right. Yes, $2,800 <laughs> off <laughs> of a cutting edge, absolutely huge 75 inch television from Samsung with pretty much every feature that you could you possibly want, want from yeah. a TV. Uh, this is an incredible deal that you won't find anywhere else. So maybe this is like a great family gift or something like that for a whole household, go pick up yours right now. Killer if, deal. If I hadn't already sold myself a TV 
from hosting this show, I'd probably be in Not line. a 75-inch TV, though. <laughs> right. So, so, Marie, <laughs> apologies if the rest of our holiday budget just seems to evaporate by the time the show is off the air. And a 75-inch TV just, just happens, happens to show up at our house. To arrive, I'd need a whole new wall mount, though. Yep. We could make that happen. Uh, so, like we said at the start today, this is our last episode of Newegg Now for 2018. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're subscribed to Newegg Studios on YouTube to keep up with the videos we're gonna be rolling out over the coming weeks. We do have some stuff shot. It's gonna be sort of pre-recorded. Some, And again, the Newegg Ninjas here do some of the, the best product photography, yes. bar none, on the internet. And then uh, you'll wanna be uh, you'll wanna be ahead of the curve there because we'll be uh, starting to fire up some CES 2019. Woo, Vegas, baby. Videos. Vegas, baby. We're gonna do it. That's in January. It's so crazy. It's right around the corner that we'll be trekking out to Vegas to go cover all of the new stuff that's gonna lead off in 2019. Trisha and I mm -hmm. will both be there. Yes. If you're there, let us know. We can hang out, get yeah, some. Yeah, we'll do a little meetup or something. Um, totally I started. always love CES because I feel like I'm getting a peek into future tech. A lot of times when it's even still in like what I like to call dream phase. So like it's still a concept, it's still a dream that it could happen. We might have a working <laughs> prototype, but that's where I feel like some of the most unique ideas come from in the tech space. Like I've seen things at CES that have never come to fruition, but, but I am so glad that I saw them, a yeah. demo of it like six years ago because maybe someday. Yeah, so um, I mean, like, it's really fun. Some trade shows in like E3s and MWCs way more focused, you know, like gaming or mobility or right. phones or something like that. CES has become a, such a great breeding ground for concept. For everything, yeah, yes. and tying all these different things together. So I, we're going to have so much more news from Intel, NVIDIA, all of the top vendors mm -hmm. and uh, manufacturers that we work with here at Newegg. So we'll have some exciting stuff to show you. Be subscribed, smash that bell icon on the YouTube. hey -o. And uh, definitely uh, check it out because we're going to have a lot of fun. Awesome. So thanks again very much to Alex from Microsoft and Greg from Generali for joining us today. And thanks, of course, to all of you out there for watching. Yeah. So remember to check out the Yule PC live stream. I don't know why we don't have it up on the TV. All December. Right uh, the oh, link is in the description below if you forgot <laughs> how beautiful it is or you want to check it out at all during the rest of this month and during the holidays. So happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. And we will see you in 2019. Yes. yes. So this has been New Egg Now, and now you know. Bye, guys. Bam.